Hey guys, it's a beautiful evening. We're here at Riverview Park and we're looking at a really exciting electric bike from Cube. This is their Kathmandu Hybrid Pro 625. And the 625 denotes a very high capacity. It's actually the highest that Bosch currently offers. Uh, internally mounted battery pack and they call this their FIB fully integrated battery. I want to compliment Cube because they've done this plastic black cover here that only weighs half a pound and it's sort of universal so it fits on many bikes in their their lineup it's not just like a color matched metal heavier more expensive solution i think that's it's really nice and it looks beautiful you can see it matches the fenders and some of the other black accents on this bike Kathmandu is the capital of nepal which is famous for mount everest and the himalayas and stuff so at first i was i heard the name and i was like well that's maybe it's a mountain bike uh, but when you look at the tires here you can see they're more of a hybrid uh, very capable tire and they've got some puncture protection here but reflective sidewall stripes integrated lights adjustable angle stem those are those are not usually mountain bike features they are very comfortable and they could make this a great touring platform something that goes a long way coming back to that high capacity battery pack and comfort is really optimized on this bike we've got a suspension seat post we've got a comfort memory foam saddle right here locking ergonomic grips there's a there's a lot going on to make this comfortable and it comes in five frame sizes uh, as well as three frame styles so we're looking at the mid step uh, but they also have a high step and a step through for people who want just the most approachable easiest to manage uh, frame and, and that's nice because this bike does weigh a little bit more it's it's you know kind of heavy because of the the battery pack the higher capacity tends to weigh more i'm on the 46 frame uh which you know back at the side i've got the different frame sizes listed i've, I've measured all the different specs stand over height reach and everything this is probably a little bit small for me but i like the mid-step frame because it balances stiffness with approachability um, so anyway, being able to dial this in and have a really good fit and have some higher end, uh, you know, touch points and hardware make this bike very capable. I'm impressed with it, but it does weigh a little bit more. Okay. So this thing's about 58 pounds and you know, most of that weight is positioned low and center on the frame. You can see the battery right there. And then the motor, uh, the, the rack is really interesting to me because it's it's kind of integrated into the frame. You can see this is all color matched and everything. The, the lowers on the fork, the frame itself, sort of this satin gray with some shiny orangish accents. And then that carries through on the frame. It's aluminum alloy. And then they've got this rack time uh, rack bolted onto the top. And it gives you a lot of additional features. So standard gauge tubing with a pannier hanger. So you could, you could hang panniers off the side and then you could also have a trunk bag on top. You could use this little clasp thing and then i think they've got some slider bags that sort of interface with this so that's really cool you know rear light two leds on that i mentioned the reflective sidewall stripes before but look at these rims okay these have uh, eyelets reinforcement eyelets and that's going to add additional strength extra thick spokes here these are a little bit thicker than uh, kind of like a city bike but there's also 36 of them versus like 32 so these are 13 gauge spokes front and rear and then back here we've got a 10 speed cassette 11 to 42 teeth so that is very wide it gives you plenty of options for starting for climbing it's very capable shimano dior derailleur with a one-way clutch so you can put that in the down locking position oh actually that's that's sort of unlock loose position it's a little bit more flexy and then in the up position it locks it it stiffens it up right so that's designed to keep the chain from bouncing around and bumping into the frame or maybe falling off um, dropping the chain so i feel like they've really they've done a good job covering those points and i've, I've scrutinized this bike because it is a little bit more expensive uh, this thing is 39.99 usd or 47.99 canadian um, Cube is a German brand and they're sold all over the world. One of my trade-offs for this brand is that it doesn't seem like there are a ton of dealers that carry them in North America, but some of the bigger shops do. And that's kind of neat. It's nice if you can go into a shop and get some support and you know actually try these bikes, especially because they come in so many sizes. But if you don't live in a big city where one of these shops are, that might be a challenge. Um, I'm borrowing this from Caps Bicycle Shop in New Westminster near Vancouver. So thanks to them, it's just sort of a loner and I was excited to review it. They said this is a popular bike for them and I can I can see why. Uh, yeah, you're paying a little bit more, but you're getting really high-end drive systems and components. You can see there's a 
clear sticker slap guard here and it's actually rubberized so that's going to protect the frame if that chain does come into contact maybe you're on really rough gravel uh, just coming back to the cassette the whole thing very nicely done uh, and and i think almost overdone in some cases like we mentioned this rack here but they also have a threaded eyelet down here which you don't really need because the fenders mount directly to the rack and the rack is not removable so maybe that's just left over from this same frame that they they reuse and then they just tack this rack on it surprised me because so many bikes i'm sort of questioning or complaining like why didn't they add more mounting points you know it's it's always nice to have them so you can customize your bike over time i like that they've got uh, bottle cage bosses right here on the top tube the stock photos actually show it on the down tube so i was surprised this is a lot more accessible it's easier to reach maybe you know I, they've kind of got it below the saddle so if you step forward maybe you're in front of it but that could raise your minimum like standover height on the bike and coming back to what type of rider you are and how you approach this kind of heavy bike just be thoughtful about that maybe you put like a handlebar mounted uh, cup holder or something instead and you could put like a folding lock down here and with so many options on that rear rack I guess I just wanted to be kind of complete and, and share my thoughts. I like the chain cover. It's this glossy plastic, not really big, not rattling around a whole lot as I've been riding. And it does protect the top as well as the front. So it goes all the way down here. So if you're pedaling forward, maybe the cuff of your, your pant leg isn't gonna come back and touch. I definitely like that 38 tooth on that chain ring, by the way. And then let's talk a little bit about the wheel interface here. We've got standard 100 millimeter hub spacing in the front, 135 in the rear. I mentioned the upgraded spokes and the reinforcement eyelets and rims and stuff like that. But both of these are quick release. This is a mid-drive electric bike. And one of the benefits is that, you know, the motor systems are all right here. You don't have too many extra cables going to the rear for like a rear hub. And it means you're going to be able to replace and repair these wheels a lot easier which is nice coming back to this whole trekking touring concept the catman do i like the kickstand choice this is q branded it's adjustable length but you actually have to unscrew a bolt on the other side uh four millimeter hex bolt all the way and take it all the way out and then pick the next hole and set it in it doesn't just slide and it's not tool free there are some really nice kickstands now that you, you can adjust them on the fly i think for most people they're not going to be adjusting it and they probably don't want it rattling around a whole lot this proprietary like single bolt interface has felt really solid it's not like sometimes you kick the kickstand up and it like rattles a whole lot this one just feels tight which i like and it's not mounted at the center of the bike so you're not going to get pedal lock if you're walking this bike backwards and let's demonstrate that see so a lot of times you're coming out of a bike rack or a garage or something and you get pedal lock so cube has really dialed that in hydraulic disc brakes three finger levers shimano big 180 millimeter rotors front and rear standard you know dual piston calipers these really get the job done uh but you'll notice that the way they've integrated with the bosch mid-drive system i mean it's it's really tilted and kind of rotated up here maybe that's to get this like shorter reach for a smaller frame size and then they've used the kind of the old-fashioned magnet spoke magnet right here and sensor on the left chainstay so for me that is not as cool as when you have the magnet like right on the disc brake and then it's like the sensor is really close this can kind of get bumped and you can see it's actually spun a little bit out of position already and then sometimes you get like a sensor error and, and that could be sort of a bummer if you're on a long trip and again this is the bosch cx it's a standard class one e-bike motor it means it can go in many many more environments legally like a lot of bike paths and stuff and, and if you're going on a really long ride and you don't want to have any issues with the law class one's probably the best thing it does have a really nice walk mode which i use to get this up the stairs coming back to like 58 pounds the bike is not super light so i'm glad that they've got that going coming back up to the suspension fork okay this is like 100 millimeters of travel these are you know steel stanchions it's not an air fork this is a coil spring fork and i was kind of surprised considering how how nice the rest of the bike is just you've just got two preload clickers and you want to adjust those in tandem so if you turn a little bit here turn a little bit there and you kind of want them to line up to have this nice even flow and preload lets you preload the suspension so if you're a heavier guy or lightweight guy or girl you can you can make it so where the the suspension feels comfortable and that's nice but it really isn't like lockout or rebound or these other things it's not an air fork that would have been a little bit lighter 
yeah, the paint is matched and, and that's kind of nice, but you, to me that was one of the cheaper parts on the bike and I wasn't sure, you know, when I really stopped to think about it, I'm, I'm always like critiquing the bikes and like, where are the trade-offs? How are they hitting these price points and stuff? And maybe that's one of the trade-offs, but a spring suspension is gonna be a lot more durable and probably hold its its actions the better than like an air fork over time. Air sort of dissipates and as air heats up, the profile changes and stuff. So I'm trying to like give them the benefit of the doubt, but that's a cheaper part in my in my opinion. And back here on the rack, one of the things I, I really wish they would have done is maybe have like a little arm right here with like a bungee cord that could connect and just just another option, right? A lot of times you have a rack or a bag, like a pannier bag that has a little arm that's gonna connect to the support arm of your rack. And I think this this works here and it almost blocks for the rear wheel, but maybe just having a bungee loop, that would have been something easy to do. Just add a little bit uh, little bit more, more options for you. I love that they've got a tapered steer tube because that does mean you can upgrade this fork if you want to. So inch and an eighth to inch and a half. They've got internally routed cables and you can see that this, the, the Intuvia, electronic cable here it's a little bit stretched right so if you turn really hard you can see it's almost like scuffing the frame a little bit it's not pulling so tight that it's actually pulling the cable out or anything and maybe you can you can pull some out of here to loosen it up but that that first that kind of concerned me because this is a really nice display um and the other side same thing internally routed cables and stuff 30.9 millimeters on that seat post suspension so if maybe you want to reduce the weight and get like a carbon fiber suspension post or something um, you can totally do that you can swap that out and that suspension post is actually adjustable so if you take it out there's uh i think it's a six millimeter hex bolt in the bottom you can just loosen it or tighten it same thing like the fork it's just a preload adjust so it's it's not bad it's definitely a step up i like the lights that they did choose you can see that that rear light is not going to be blocked by a trunk bag or panniers and it's also not going to get damaged like if you run into something or the bike tips over so that's great same thing with the fenders like they're plastic just like that chain cover but they're thick plastic and they're very quiet they're not like rattly which i i definitely appreciate you can see that back to this fork here even though i was questioning it a minute ago at least they have the bosses for mounting fenders on it so you don't you don't need that cuff type of thing that can slide up and down it mounts directly and then the support arm is protected by the fender it's not sticking out it won't poke you like some of the cheaper designs so i like that the headlight very nice 50 lux and this is the shiny 50 q branded and that actually shines up you know, there have been times where I'm like, does it really need to shine up? I mean, I, I guess it's just a branding thing. It's not going to shine in your eyes, thankfully. But it does have side windows, which is really nice to keep you visible, along with those reflective sidewall stripes. It's mounted a little bit further down. You know, I, ideally, I think it would be up here. There is enough room. It's not too cluttered with the cables. And down here on the arch of the suspension, it might bounce around and rattle a little bit more. So for visibility and also to, to make it sprung, it'd be nice if it was up here. It's a little little tidbit. And then this stem, I mentioned it early on, you know, it's definitely, it's elevated here. So I think this is like 80 millimeters and then I think 100 millimeters. It, it goes from 10 to 90 degrees. So you can angle this forward and get an aggressive, more aerodynamic riding position or pretty upright, like almost like straight up. And that would give you this really comfortable upright body position where you can see your friends and you can spot traffic and stuff. So I'm a fan of that. And same thing, like look at the colors and everything. It's really, really nicely done. Low rise handlebar, flat, sort of straight. And that's something you'd see on mountain bikes and stuff. And then they've got a little a little bell. So again, they're, they're really mixing like some comfort features, but then that that mountain biking, some some of it's mountain bike hardware. You know, it's, it's, it's cool. It's a neat bike that way. And now the drive system on this thing, this is Bosch Performance Line CX. It's a very powerful motor. Traditionally, it would offer 75 Newton meters of torque, and that's actually what this bike currently offers. Uh, but Bosch has a summer 2020 update that you can have installed at your dealer, and it'll take it up to 85 Newton meters of torque, which is just fantastic. It's also gonna give you a little bit more power at low cadence. So let's say you're starting a climb, or maybe you've got a trailer or a bunch of cargo on this. When you're pedaling kind of slow in the past, 
it just didn't give you as much power. So they're, they're really trying to help you. And then they have this continuous support. So if you're mountain biking and you're going up a steep hill and there's some rocks and stuff and you're trying to balance, a lot of times, you know, on your downstroke, like down, you've got plenty of power. But about halfway through, when you get to like right here, you don't have as much power. You're, you're relying a little bit on momentum of the bike. Uh, but if you're climbing slowly and you're on technical terrain, that can be a moment where the bike sort of stalls and you can become unstable. So what they've done is in the EMTB mode, it, it creates this continuous support. And that's another one of those updates. Only in EMTB mode, only if you do uh, the update. So that's cool. Bosch is known for having some of the best motors on the market. They're definitely some of my favorite. Now that they have a full-size chain ring, um, it's it's even nicer. There isn't this like reduction gear drag that we saw in years past with this tiny proprietary sprocket. This looks a lot more traditional. It it works great. You can pedal backwards on it, but it's not that doesn't actually turn the the chain ring. It's listening for pedal cadence, pedal torque, and rear wheel speed with that magnet sensor over a thousand times per second. It's super responsive and it has shift detection. So it, it can sense like they're pedaling, that's a pedal, pedal. But then if there's like bursts of tension changing, that signals that it's, it's shifting. And so the motor backs off a little bit so you don't mess up your chain and bend the teeth on the rear sprockets. Very cool. I'm a fan of it. The, the new motors are, they're more compact and more lightweight than ever. And you can tell that it's fourth generation because it will be you know, a performance line, whether it's CX, Speed, or one of the, the cargo or cargo speed, and then a full size chain ring. So this is fourth generation right here. Let's get into the battery. So one of the other kind of trade-offs or complaints I have about this bike is that it's a really high capacity battery, but they only give you the Mosh compact charger. So it's compact, it's small and it's relatively light, but it's only two amp output. So you know, it could be eight plus hours for a full charge. Now you can charge it up to half very quickly because the cells don't have to balance. It just, it fills it up. But then as you get closer to full, it really slows down. And this charger, it's not that much heavier and it's not that much bigger to get the full size charger. So for a nicer, more expensive bike, I was kind of surprised that that's what you got, but it has a nice proprietary interface. It's not gonna get mixed up with other chargers. It's not gonna bend or break as easily if you drop it or step on it. They did spring for the nicer Abus key set. So these are the Your Plus keys. There's a, a code on the other side that helps you order locks and things that are gonna match this. So that is awesome. And at first I was like, where's, where's the locking point? Like, how do you, where do you charge this and stuff? Well, it's all really nicely done. You can see they've actually got this like vented plastic over here on this side, and that's to dissipate heat for the motor. Down here, just a, a plastic skid plate, some more vents right on the bottom, maybe for drainage and for heat. And then there's this charging port cover. Pretty nicely done. It's minimalist, but it's it's easy to shut and it stays put. So that's, that's very nice. You can charge the battery on the bike. When you're ready to take the battery off, there's like this button here for that plastic shield. Press that and then see it's a little bit tricky depending on how your front wheel is positioned, especially with that, that fender and stuff. So we just kind of pull up a little bit. There we go. Set this down. That's the shield I'm talking about. That's the same one for, for all the bikes. So it's a little bit cheaper to do. There is the power tube 625 and it's a bottom mounting design. Bosch also has a side mounting design. Now here is the locking core. You twist and then it felt at first I was like, why isn't it opening? You got to twist even further, a little bit harder. There we go. And then it clicks out to that like removable position. And I want to take the keys out. I, I thought I, I thought I could, but I guess they, they kind of get stuck in there. Um, in this position. It's a little bit inconvenient if you have a keychain and stuff. And this is tough to do with one hand, but there's a little button on top. And we take this out. Yeah, so it's it's a fairly heavy battery pack, like eight plus pounds. Um, this is their highest capacity. There's the same charging interface to use with uh, the battery over there. It's got this nice metal case. It's durable, but it's it's just heavier and thicker than some of the other competing products. And you know, this comes back to Bosch's two-year comprehensive warranty. Their stuff really lasts a long time. They use high quality cells and stuff. So this is rated at 36 volts, 16.7 amp hours. And when you do the math on that, that's only 601 watt hours, but they call it the 625. 
so is that just marketing? I, I don't I don't really know. I've reached out to Bosch about it. And I think the feedback I've gotten in the past is like, yeah, you know, well, we kind of round down a little bit on on the voltage and amp hours. And so really we're we're definitely up there at 625. But then here they do they print it on the side of the pack as being 36 volt, 16.7 amp hours. So I don't I don't know what to tell you about that, but I did I did want to call it out because it it might go, it might confuse some other people and you might be you know, wondering what that means. So here we are inside the frame. You can see the, the wiring and this little, it's like an interface thing from Bosch directly. Now you could take that key out, but you probably don't want to. And one of my other tips and maybe complaints is that in order to get the battery back in, you actually have to, you know, it's spring loaded. You have to twist like that to get that little locking portion down and then you also need to get the, the battery in. So this is like definitely a two-handed kind of thing. I'm gonna see if we can do it with one hand. Wish me luck here. So you just set the bottom in like this. There we go. Push up on this and we need to twist the lock. There we go. Okay, so I got it. Now I can click it in the rest of the way and you can hear it lock and take out our keys. So it's not so bad once you know what you're doing, but the first time it can be a little bit, a little bit finicky and Definitely nice to have a kickstand when we're doing all this. And now let's get this thing going. So we're looking at the Bosch Intuvia. This is one of my favorite display panels. And you can see it's got a remote button pad and we got the trigger shifters over on the right. It does have this optical window, but there are no numbers. So just remember this is a 10 speed Shimano Dior. One of my favorite shifters actually, because you can push in for both the high and low lever, or you can pull. So some of the cheaper ones you have to pull, and, and for me that compromises my grip because I always want to have my, my hands on the brakes just in case, and I use my thumb to shift gear. So with this, this shifter, you can do that. Okay, so back to this other side, the plus, minus, I for information and walk mode on top. You can't start the bike over here. You have to start it with that power button, uh, but I want to show you this display is removable. So that's a way you can lock the bike down. You can take this with you and no one can really tamper with the electronics. And that's also going to protect this plastic screen. It might not get scratched up as easily or just beat down by the sun. It does have a little micro USB charging port on the side and it is functional. So you could plug your phone into this. It's like five volts of output. So maybe you have your smartphone or something and you're, you're using it for GPS. One of the announcements for 2020 that Bosch made is they now sell their Kiox. It's like a small color display and they're going to be selling their Nyon, which was previously only available in Europe. They're going to be selling that as like a retrofit upgrade. And both of those have GPS integration. You can sync them with your phones and stuff and heart rate monitor integration and the color displays and a lot of other stuff. Both of them also have charging ports. But for me, I actually like this grayscale Intuvia. It's long been one of my favorite displays. It's still removable. It still gives you tons of, of feedback. So let's just boot this thing up and try to show you what it looks like. It comes to life very quickly. Got battery capacity up top, five bars. It'd be nice if that was percentage. So even though there's only five bars, you can still get a lot of feedback about distance and range because there's actually a range menu down here. So as we press plus or minus, we go up to eco. That's the lowest level of assist. It says 106 kilometers. That's what it's estimating based on the last mile of riding, current level of the battery pack, and just kind of a dynamic formula Bosch does. If we take it up to turbo, well, 51 kilometers. So it's about half. Uh, and I think this, you know, this is pretty interesting considering this is the high capacity battery pack. We are at 100% charged on this thing. Um, I actually had an issue with this a moment ago, and I want to share that with you so that you could potentially address and solve this if you're if you're out and about. But before I do, I, I kind of skipped over that, that casing covering. I was really excited that it's so standardized and probably affordable to replace. But I want to I want to highlight that there is one trade off, and that's the battery locks to the bike, but the cover does not. So if you're at a rack and it gets snagged, or someone just messes with it and steals it, I think it's pretty hidden. You know, it's not like the most obvious or useful thing to steal. But I did want to present that as like a trade off. So coming back up to the display, the issue that I had a minute ago, I was turning it on, and I was getting the battery and the assist levels, and a little bit of readout, but I wasn't getting. I wasn't getting current speed and I wasn't able to change assist levels. It would go from off to eco and it would bounce back down to off. So I called my friend Chris at Propel. He knows Bosch stuff really well. I was like, you know, have you run into this? I feel like I ran into it at a shop, but they just, they kind of fixed it for me. And he said, yeah, that probably means that the battery that's inside this display 
is running kind of low. And so you can actually charge that using this micro USB charging port so you can push power into it. But that's also something you can tap into with a portable electronic device. So you could you know, set your smartphone next to this display and kind of daisy chain off of it. Uh, unfortunately, I think this is only uh, five volts and half an amp. Whereas like the Kiox and the Nion, they're like a full amp, which is gonna be better if you have like an iPhone or some, some of these power hungry devices. So for, for me, this was an interesting experience. It was, I was taking the display off, putting it on. I was like, is it a loose connection? I was resetting it, you know, trying, uh, getting into the settings, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, the solution was, you know, you make sure the wires and everything are good. And I was, again, I was a little concerned about this one being pulled so tight, but what you can do is come down here to the battery pack take the uh, shield off again. And then there's a little power button right there. So you can actually turn the bike on and off just using that. So there we go, turn the bike off, see you. Before I was just using this power button. And when I was doing that, it, it just wasn't showing me speed and it wasn't letting me change it. So it seems like we're actually charging up the display now. This has probably been sitting on the floor for a while. Um, and that, that was nice, it's a bummer to get stuck while you're out riding and not be able to continue. So let's go through the rest of this display. It is backlit, it's kind of a, a faint white backlighting and I don't think you can completely disable that. We talked about range. If we press I here or here, we can cycle through some of the other readouts. So we've got odometer, trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed, trip time. Okay, if you wanna uh, adjust some of these readouts, including the units, you can hold reset and I and it will go into this menu, configuration. So we can change the clock by pressing plus or minus, and then I will take us to the next uh, item. Wheel circumference, language, we're in English, units, kilometers, or miles, time format, 24 hours, shift recommendation, that's pretty cool. As you're riding, based on uh, what gear you're in, if you're spinning really fast, the motor will say, hey, you know, we're really going at a high RPM. If you shift gears, you can be a little bit slower. It's gonna be more comfortable and it might make it easier for the motor. But I wanna compliment Bosch. Their motors support up to 120, actually 120 plus RPM rotations per minute. So it's one of the higher, more supportive uh, drive systems, mid drives out there, which means, you know, a lot of times if you're approaching a big hill like this, I will shift down well in advance so that I'm not trying to shift gears while climbing and mash the gears. But when you do that, your your pedal cadence goes and you're 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 higher, you're spinning. So it's not, this gives you some feedback, but you're also not going to lose support. I think that's great. So let's go to the next one. We got power on hours, uh, display version, and I think these are sort of software versions right here that the shop can, yeah, battery versions. So to get out of this, we hold reset and I. We're back to the main area. We've got these four levels of assist, eco, tour, sport, and turbo. I always like to test in turbo just so you guys can see and hear the loudest that this motor is gonna be. And I also wanna highlight walk mode here. I used that to get this up the steps earlier. You just press walk and then hold plus. This only works if you're in one of the four assist levels though. And it's pretty, it's pretty powerful. Even though this is slow, it will definitely climb. So I think that's about it. I'm gonna hop on this bike and ride around for a little bit here. It's really smooth. Even though I'm in the highest level of assist right now, it's not, you know, kicking me off or anything. It's, it's smooth. And, and I think that's because this is such a fancy sensor. It's the pedal cadence, pedal torque, and rear wheel speed. This time I'm gonna pedal a little harder. Yeah, woo, oh boy, it gets you going. Pretty sporty. Uh, and that's exactly what you want if you're climbing uh, or starting out, or maybe you're, you're racing a friend or something like that. So let's pedal a little bit more. Maybe we can do a, a hill climb. And I like to do these off-road shots so you can listen to the fenders and stuff. Pretty solid, very quiet. Fan of that. Let's go up this hill. <laughs> Got ourselves hung up on a log there. Let's try this hill. Shift down to a lower gear.
There we go. Having no problem. I am coming at this at an angle so that we don't have uh, too much slippage going on. These tires don't have as much traction, but no problem. I mean, that's the CX. It's a very capable motor. So I'm just gonna do a little ride by and kind of third person perspective. See you in a sec. pretty well you know with these wider tires um, I was going over some sticks and stuff in the grass earlier and I hit a stick and I didn't actually fall I you know stumbled for a minute but if you're someone who's ever gotten hung up at a train track crossing or on a curb where there's like a lip these tires are gonna do a pretty good job of that and yeah I mean Schwabi is known for making good stuff they call it the big band kind of a balloon tire so yeah I liked it really smooth Okay guys, from here you can see that plastic chain cover. It's working really well, it's quiet, it's lightweight, and I appreciate that they went minimalist with that. Uh, 38 tooth steel chain ring up front, nothing fancy, just regular teeth on that. And then 11 to 42 tooth 10 speed cassette in the rear. And check out these pedals. You know, they're, they're not the widest, but they work pretty well. They're lightweight from Cube. You can always get some Welgo, like a little bit you know, wider magnesium, still lightweight, adjustable pins. You can really go nuts with pedals, but these aren't too bad. I appreciate that they, they tossed them in. And I want to call out that the crank arms on this are 175 millimeters versus 170 is more standard. Um, maybe that's because this does have a taller wheel. So 28 by 2.15, and it has a, a decent pressure range of 30 to 55. So you can lower that if you're someone who's a little bit lighter and maybe you want the tires to squish a bit and, you know, hug that terrain, give you a bit more comfort. But if you're really going for efficiency, then you know, inflate them a bit, or you're a heavier rider. So I'm going to hop on this and still ride across the, the trail and go over some bumps so you can listen to that. And then watch and listen to the motor. It's just so responsive. It does produce some noise, but it is a powerful motor. I'm going to take it to EMTB. That's the mode that's very dynamic, even more so than the other one. So it's, you know, gives you low percentage or high percentage feedback, just really based on how hard you're pedaling. And now it's going to be smoothed out even more if you do that Bosch update. Awesome. And the brakes are working great. Just the 180 millimeters gives you a lot of mechanical advantage over that taller wheel. Um, and the taller wheels give you a lower attack angle. They smooth the ride out. There's, it's a higher air volume. So it, it elevates the frame, but given that they've got three different frame styles, it's still approachable. It's a really good combination. So just ahead is a pretty steep hill. I'm not sure the bike will make it up if I'm riding just because of the smooth tires that are on it right now, but I'm gonna try walk mode and then come back down so you can get a, see that suspension in action. Nice. It's getting towards evening here and I wanted to show you guys how the lights look in uh, maybe a darker area. There you go. You can kind of see it on the ground lighting up the tree and then there's the display. I've had a blast looking at this. I mean, you know, there are some unexpected moments and there are a few trade-offs with this bike, but overall I think they, they did a really great job. I like Cube. 
I feel like they offer great value. Remember, this is the highest capacity battery and the fanciest one that Bosch currently offers. One of their higher end motors, a lot of really nice upgrades for comfort, but, but well done. Two bolts for that adjustable angle stem. It's not gonna come loose like some of the other ones. Really nice drivetrain with the Shimano Dior, 11 to 42 teeth. For the full write-up on this, all the specs meticulously hand measured by me. Uh, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com and I welcome your feedback. Maybe you've got this bike, you have some experience with Cube or you wanna critique some of my feedback. I'm always doing my best to learn and, and help you guys out. I love you. Hope you have fun out there. We'll see you on the next one.